probably teaching more around... Hello everyone and welcome to the 9.30 to 10.30 breakout session of the first OpenSIM Community Conference. As a reminder to our in-world and web audiences, you can view the full conference schedule on our website at conference.opensimulator.org. You can post your questions in local chat here, on the Ustream chat, or tweet your comments using the hashtag OSCC13. The second hour here, we're happy to introduce Heike Flip, who will be presenting Camelot and the Mists of Avalon. That sounds so great. Heike will share with us today how language teaching and learning meets new challenges in virtual environments, and how language educators mastering those challenges are empowered to create machinima. Machinima, for those who don't know, is the use of real-time virtual worlds and 3D video games to create a cinema cinematic production. In real life, Heike is the CEO of Let's Talk Online, a live online technology provider specializing in the field of language learning in real time in virtual classrooms and virtual worlds. She is the co-initiator of the EU-funded Lancelot, Avalon, and Camelot projects, runs her own online conference, and co-owns Edunation Island in Second Life. Heike was a keynote speaker recently at the Virtual World's Best Practices in Education, and I could really hear how excited she was about her newest project, the Camelot. I'm really looking forward to your presentation today, Heike. Thank you for being here. Please join me, me in welcoming Heike. Take it over, Heike. Thank you very much, Erin, if I pronounce this correctly. Um, thank you very much also to the audience. I'm waving a hello from Brussels in Belgium and I'm just wondering where you are located and perhaps if you could give me a little background as to your professional um, yeah, undertakings. <laughs> Hi James. And uh, if you could perhaps in just one line type in the text chat where you're located and what your professional background is. And thank you very much for being here. I'm delighted and I'm absolutely thrilled about the OpenSIM um, conference, Open, OpenSIM community conference, uh, because we have been watching um, the development of OpenSIM with big, big eyes. And as you all know, after Linden Lab abolished the educational discount three years, two, two and a half, well, a bit more than three years ago. Um, since then, it was actually a struggle. Well, some of us could still get an extended two years of paying educational rate, but this year has been a real struggle. And uh, we're happy and delighted to announce that Linden Lab has reinstated the educational rate uh, about July this year. And this is because a lot of educational organizations have left Second Life and moved into OpenSIM. So it's uh, it's wonderful to see that they haven't abandoned virtual worlds, but they've just abandoned a very uh, commercial um, undertaking. So, and what I'm here about to present is uh, a bit exciting, very exciting for us because um, Camelot is now the third year funded project and if you've been at the Virtual World Best Practice and Education Conference, you will have heard me talk about it that at the time when I was asked to give and present a keynote, uh, it was still proposal stage and I, I took the chances to actually announce it as the title of my talk, knowing that we would get the okay or not in July and Virtual World Best Practice and Education was end of July. So I, I took a gamble and will you believe it or not, a week before the keynote, we got the okay. And this is amazing considering that 7% of all proposals in that section what we handed in were accepted. Um, overall, this is a little bit of a history of my uh, professional life and uh, Camelot is the third year funded project, but it's always about um, language learning at a distance in real time. So I will talk a little bit more about Lancelot and Avalon at uh, the end of this talk, so bear with me. What I wanted to point out is that we will have an, our own conference called Slanguages at the end of February. Again, more information later on. 
Um, my passion is in virtual classroom technology and virtual worlds. And uh, I'm, I'm quite good with reading text chat. So if you are if you give me uh, questions, I'll be able to respond to that straight. And uh, I'm quite happy to also converse with you about this one. But let me quickly now go into the subject, what is Camelot all about? And Camelot is an EO funded project uh, which, I mean, if you're considering that all three projects together, I have been able to initiate and raise more than two million US dollars. Yeah, Camelot, these EU funded projects, they have their size. <laughs> uh, it's about half a million euro, just uh, to be to straight, be straight. Yeah. And Camelot is um, creating Machinima empowers live online language teaching and learning. Uh, as you are in the audience, quite experienced second lifers, and <laughs> uh, who, who of us could tell me what Machinima stands for? I would like to mention that the project consortium is made up of nine partners, four of which are universities. Um, you can't hear Letty? Uh, click the stream. Yeah, click on the stream. It's great that you're here. And um, it's uh, the University of Central Lancashire. Dr. Michael Thomas is project coordinator. Uh, we will, from December 2013 onwards, be engaged in uh, spending two years producing Machinima. Those of you, have, has anybody of you written down what Machinima stands for? Are you all familiar with the expression Machinima? Now, Machinima is a video recording in virtual worlds. Yeah, it can also be in a virtual... <laughs> okay, Buffy, you didn't know what it stood for. It is, um, yeah. Machine and cinema, correct, Chimera, that is absolutely correct. Machine and cinema is uh, what the word is derived from. It is a video taken in a virtual world or in a, in, in a game. Um, there is actually a Machinima channel on YouTube. You will be very much surprised to see that this channel has 8 million subscribers and about 4.3 billion click views. Now, the Encore is not virtual worlds like Second Life or Open Sim, but the Encore is um, uh, virtual games. Uh, so it's a gaming, gaming thing. Uh, video gamers, World of Warcraft and these sort of things, they record their screen in order to give some tactical explanations and stuff. So, but Camelot will be about videos taken in virtual worlds of language learning conversations. Now, there's four reasons why the EU, EU has granted us this money uh, and two-year project, which is rather large. It's because they're saying uh, it is um, beneficial for the autonomy of teachers and learners. That means teachers are learning how to create machinima. Machinima is digital e-learning material, and there is a need of digital material in future, a lot of need, and teachers can actually produce their own animated films with the teacher training course that will be developed in Camelot. It's also, of course, uh, yeah, I'll be sharing some t uh, learner productions. The wonderful thing that teachers can show their students is to record themselves, to create Mishnama themselves. They are lean productions. There's no need for uh, camera equipment because we are recording the screen. Then the live video concept is one thing that we sold to the EU because other than any other video production out there, and there have been many in the past, you know, the BBC recordings of how to learn a language, but um, the uh, video productions that you see on the web that are there to learn a language, those machinima have a distinct advantage and that is that if somebody is learning the language with a short video of um, virtual world scenario 
this person can actually lock himself into that virtual world, into OpenSim, into Second Life, and teleport himself to the location where that video was shot and actually engage in real time with local residents. So they, yes, they can teleport to virtual Hyde Park Corner in virtual London in Second Life and actually meet people who are speaking English. And that is very, very unique and no other medium makes this possible if you're learning a language with video. Here, this is what I've mentioned already. The definition, the use of real-time computer graphics rendering engines to create a cinematic production. Now, how do we, and I class myself, we as in, we language teachers. We are not filmmakers. We are not um, video producers. We are language teachers. So it was an enormous undertaking to um, get this expertise or to find out whether the language teachers would not be too overwhelmed really taking videos. And we did a workshop in 2012 and in 2013 and I believe the success of that workshop was instrumental for the EU to understand that, that yes there is a, a great want. We had up to I think a total of 200 language teachers be part of Machinevo Evo is um, actually a quite common uh, online session, five-week workshop, January, February. Um, there are some 2,000 language teachers taking part. It's a little bit like a MOOC for uh, language teachers organized by TESOL. TESOL is the main association in America for teachers of English. Two speakers of other languages is what the acronym is called. Uh, so we did Machine Evo and we started off knowing nothing. <laughs> so we invited experts and been really, really grateful to learn from those in Second Life who are real life video producers. Um, the previous one that you just saw, Gromit, is a video commercial producer for a big, large company in Germany. Charlie is a video producer and they freely shared their know-how. Dragster Dupre is amongst those. <laughs> yeah, D a dragster, uh, you, many of you know, um, who's done Fluffy. Fluffy is no longer allowed to be streamed and Pooks Pookie Media was around. We had lots of uh, great consultancy, I should say. We also invited directors of, uh, that's uh, My Avatar and Me is a film production which is a real life, second life, mix a fantasy documentary that was um broadcast on television. They joined us in Second Life. They shared their know-how. We learned about bitrate, frame rate. We learned about camera controls. We learned about um, all sorts of techniques, you know. Um, uh, we learned also that the camera should be relatively kept um, on eye height or focus on objects like in the real film. If you focus on an object, it's part of the story. We did the productions of Machinevo, which now number at more than 50 videos in all sorts of languages like uh, English, French, Italian, German, Chinese, um, we awarded them with the Machinevo Award and some of them got lots of awards and you must watch some of them. We will be, by the way, doing this workshop again this coming January, February. And uh, we're looking forward to more production. Well, we're about to create one channel now, a YouTube channel with all our productions. But the fascinating thing is for us that um, uh, many of us, well, the uh, workshop was actually for teachers who had SL experience. And in the beginning, when that is what we proposed, uh, we didn't think anybody would be interested in joining because of the many who, who left Second Life, right? But um, we were surprised. The, the, the teachers who partook of that in that workshop, they were so excited. They spent day and night on education, filming and scripting and storyboarding and role-playing and, uh, and so forth. I'm, I'm going through the slides. If it's a little bit too quickly now, it's because um, that is just a summary of... Um, the various machinimas that we were able to produce. Now, I would like to show you 
one now, if that's okay. Uh, it's a um, mashup of the various machinimas that we've created. So you'll see, it's it, there's only music to the video. We, I haven't tran uh, transmitted the voices, but I've just taken like um, a broad variety of machinima impressions with some music to give you an idea of the stunning quality. Because we're also very thrilled that these productions are of really high quality. So let me give you now the um, URL and so that you can watch that first video, which is uh, set a mashup of machinimas. Machinima, I shouldn't say machinimas, I apologize. The uh, plural of mach machinima is machinima. <laughs> we had to learn all of this. So I'm going to paste this now into the web on prim, which is on the right hand side of me. If you don't see it, don't worry, I'll give you the link also in text chat. Okay, so I've done it. It takes a little while to, to come through for some reason. But you can also watch it here. And for the sake of uh, you stream, sorry, is that the local chat? It's a bit difficult to understand. Okay, for the sake of um, you stream, we're trying to get this going here in world. And Joyce is helping me there, I believe. Because it takes a while to um, for this web on print to budge. <laughs> Joyce is or Rhiannon here in SR oh, Open Sim. She is definitely tired, I can imagine. This just started. This conference is just breathtaking, honestly. Apologize is not not coming through for some reason. I'm trying to get this Come on. Burger. <laughs> anyway, you can watch this for yourself if you don't mind. And let me know when you're finished. I have seen in seven years that I have been working in a virtual world. Go from a beginner learner to an intermediate English learner in four months if they will spend 15 hours a week. Uh, my name is Rinit and uh, I'm from Kazakhstan and I started uh, to practice English here uh, in mm. virtual reality uh, sure why not. months ago. Uh, one uh, interesting thing I realized just last week is that I got addicted to it. <laughs> Uh, so, in an online environment, you can learn tactily, you can learn visually, you can learn auditory. It, plus, you have that experiential type learning where you can feel what you're learning. Uh, talk to people through voice. Or the link works fine. Great. See note cards and then use Facebook or people. And for those on Ustream. I have probably introduced in seven years, 24,000 people, probably teaching more around 10, nine to 10,000. Yeah, there's 54,000 students on the database that have signed up for an SL account. I think it's a, a way to learn that you don't feel that you're in, actually in a class. I, um, I'm always I having fun. In seven years that I have been working. I have I seen some of the years. greatest so videos and machinima is one of the best ways to show hours. Oh, uh, like a drama club and people perform something and, and uh, then you can uh, record it. Uh, I started from Kazakhstan to practice uh, English I here started, uh, uh, in virtual reality here uh, four uh, months in virtual reality. Uh, Four months ago, I realized uh, just one last week. Interesting thing, I realized that just I last week. got addicted. To it. That I got uh, addicted so in an to it. Uh, you so can learn in an online tactile environment. You can learn, you can learn, you can learn auditory. Tactile. You can learn Plus visually. You have that you can learn auditory type learning. Plus where you, you have that experience. Uh, so, 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 u
some of the cards, boy, so but text and use Facebook and or people some emote cards. Some people blog the experience they have here. Some people I have blog the experience they have here. Introduced I have seven probably twenty four thousand people. Probably teaching twenty-four thousand around ten. Probably teaching nine to ten more around ten. There is fifty-four thousand students on the database. So tell me when you're finished. I have seen some of the greatest videos. I have seen some of the greatest videos. And the cinema is one of the oh, best okay. ways to German show. Club, they people perform so like that. And then the German club, they people perform so like that. People can see it later. Then you can record this. People can see it later. Ralph, you shouldn't be here. My father. Ralph. It's now running. You're done. Thank you very much, Chimera. And it was that, um, it was the... Me. But I do know about his daughter. Finish now. Why? I believe I gave you the link of the one with um, the interview of Lowry Mills. Is that correct? What's such a baby about that? I'm 16 years old. What's such a baby about that? So let me continue. If you're still watching it now, perhaps uh, you wanna. So let me just. Now I'm trying to stop the one in world. <laughs> okay, just a second. Hmm. So what? Just one second. I'm trying to stop the um the other one. Okay, that is in world. So you seeing the slides again? Let me continue with this presentation. You, um, here you just heard an interview of uh, Lowry Mills. And did you notice, excellent, did you notice what she said, how many students the uh, language lab has uh, locked into to Second Life? Did you notice that, what, the number that she said? It was, by the way, it was the wrong video. <laughs> I said it's a, it's a mashup of different machinimas, and it was the interview of Lowry Mills. Lowry Mills, a uh, community manager of Language Lab, and she, uh, they introduced 54,000 students to Second Life. Now, this is about the scale that they've done over the period of seven years. 54,000 students. And you perhaps also saw the lovely machinima that students created at the end. And they're very busy doing this, yeah? So, um, you'll watch that, uh, that video with the various machinimas in a minute. Let me just mention the mists of Avalon. <laughs> Why did I call it the mists? It is kind of funny because um, Avalon stands for Access to Virtual and Action Learning Live Online and was the project prior to Camelot, uh, which we ran uh, also with some, I think, 23 partners of which seven or eight were universities. Sorry, I've got the Ustream running here in the background. And um, we called it the mists because when we entered virtual worlds, it was kind of foggy. <laughs> we had no idea where it would take us. And uh, the Avalon project was led by University of Mancha and was, um, in many respects, from an academic point of view, a very, very successful project because it hosts on the wiki of Avalon information uh, scientific, well, research information of learning in virtual worlds, uh, why it is beneficial, how it is beneficial, uh, the research that's been undertaken by various universities in Europe, etc. Now, Avalon was the successor to Lancelot. Lancelot uh, talked about um, language teaching in virtual classrooms, in 2D virtual classrooms with webcam and 
headset and a whiteboard typically and a text chat. So that was the starter. I wanted to mention it here now because this was for me a natural progression. Interestingly, it took 12, seven years for this kind of technology, which we now know as webinars and web conferences and Adobe Connect, to become mainstream. So this is probably what you will, we will need to expect for, um, yeah, virtual worlds as well, about seven years, I think. <laughs> so we've got another, another five years to go. So now I have a little game for you. <laughs> Those who are familiar with the Gardner hype cycle, um, you can now stretch your imagination. Can I ask you what this peak is called? Um, and if you don't know Gardner hype cycle, type in the text chat that you don't know about this one. What is the peak called? <laughs> Thank you, Greta. Lovely. She says it's admirable. The peak. Yeah, you've seen it a lot, Buffy. So the peak is the peak of... Now I have to just sneak myself and check it exactly so that I don't tell you not the peak of um, inflation. No, 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 no. <laughs> the peak of inflated expectations. This was it. <laughs> okay. The peak of inflated expectations. Yeah, Chimera knew. And the trust of disillusionment, that was my next question, James or Callister. <laughs> um, that was the next one, the uh, trust of disillusionment. And then, do you know what the next is called as soon as it picks up? And we're talking here, Gardner Hype Cycle describes a technology. Just a moment, please. Mm, yeah. Uh, God, um, the Gartner Hype Cycle is applicable to any technology. We're not just talking about virtual worlds, but also mobile or any other technology. There's a hype, then there's a trust of disillusionment. And then the next one is the slope of enlightenment. Yeah. And the last one is the most interesting for us. Do you know which one is the last one is called? <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> the plateau of productivity. And the OpenSIM community conference shows beautifully and very clearly that virtual worlds have reached a plateau of productivity. And Second Life has reached a plateau of productivity and we language teachers who've been in virtual worlds, you know, getting this know-how on how to teach here in this in environment, we have now also reached a plateau of productivity with, well, partly with Machinima. Because Machinima is then a beautiful standalone product as well that we can sell. We also offer, of course, language courses in real time, but Machinima are one of those things that we can sell. And we can use Machinima to introduce students into this virtual world. And with that, I'm already at the end of my presentation. I would love to still show you the other video, which I said, the mashup, and invite you to attend the seventh language, languages, actually, annual symposium. It is end of February, it's an edge nation in Second Life and uh, we invite everyone also in various platforms, OpenSim, Cloud Party, uh, Minecraft, World of Warcraft to present if it has to do with language learning of course, it's a very specific te theme <laughs> that we're doing here. And uh, with that I'm going to give you the last video. Both videos um, I have created specially for this talk. So that's the mashup now. <laughs> oh.
Okay, I'm going to again try and paste this here in web on print. Enjoy. The web on prem is running for me now, so I'll be stopping that one now. Since you're all finished. Yeah. And what is amazing to us is um, if you just think of visuals or just look at the visuals that have been created by simple language teachers, can I say that? <laughs> we are simple language teachers, we're not film producers. Um, they're absolutely stunning, yeah, and we, we're so proud of these productions. Uh, and we've, it's kind of, we're so excited to have, now after, you know, after acquiring this know-how about virtual worlds, we kind of weren't all that challenged anymore, and now we are really challenged, and we feel like film directors and extras and so you know and so and the beautiful thing is that um, groups have formed like the Spanish for example they've been producing some 10 episodes already um, y yes it's new and there's a lot to learn and there's a lot to learn which borders um, filmmaking and uh, we're very happy so this is my last slide now um, Thank you very much for attending. Um, at this stage, obviously, I cannot tell you a lot about the Camelot project, except for that it will start in December this year, that we're all very, very excited, that we're looking forward to a beautiful set of con productions. And if I may invite the audience to um, be part of Machineva coming up January, February, that would be fantastic. But perhaps also consider projects that could be um, undertaken now. What we need to have is institutions who give us certain tasks so that we can produce the machinima and are ready to test them out with their students. It's an extensive field test. <laughs> Chimera says, if Heike can teach me machinima, I will follow her anywhere. <laughs> Chimera and me, we attended a, a, a fantastic course 
of the University of Washington in Seattle, and uh, which I highly recommend. Uh, virtual World Certificate, she has done amazingly. <laughs> I'm so happy to see her here, real soulmate. So, thank you very much for listening. With that, I'm also a little bit good in time, I guess. We're open for questions. So, um, as I said, I invite you to propose to us projects. We would like to create a specific machinima for a specific target group, learning Chinese, learning Turkish, learning. So, and uh, we invite you to come on because we'd love to to have tasks. <laughs> Thanks, Mystic. Mystic is saying, and I'm repeating this for the Ustream, it's very amazing what can be done in any virtual world. So many people who are such genius at doing anything, it always amazes me. I admire and respect all of you. Thank you so much for this comment. It's lovely. <laughs> so time for questions. <laughs> And I'm actually missing another presentation yet, oh, Open Sim Conference of some machinimatographers of our of Edge Nation, Carol, Rainbow and Litty will be presenting, but correct me, I'm not quite sure when exactly, could you? Is Letty still here? If she could type that in the text chat so we don't miss her presentation. The question is by Buffy, it says, do you think virtual worlds will grow in popularity for teaching? Yes, I do, for sure. Um, I'm also waiting a little bit for our, I call it the Google avatar, because if you've looked around what Google Earth has become over the last couple of years, you're surprised that you can actually walk the Fifth Avenue surrounded by huge buildings. And as soon as we get our Google avatar, people will embrace virtual worlds. Yeah, Google World is a very, very strong candidate and also a very strong candidate. Um, our browser-based stuff like Cloud Party. Um, yeah, but as I said, for us, it's, it's, it's any virtual world. It doesn't really matter which one. It, uh, as long as it, um, for Machinima, everything goes. Another question has, uh, by James is, Heike, how do you convince people that they don't get virtual worlds, that this is a legit legitimate way to learn a language? Well, machinimas have been one way of producing what I could call marketing material for virtual worlds. It actually has invited, and are you familiar with Dragster's production, Dragster Depre? He has produced interviews with people who successfully conduct business in Second Life, and he's putting them out. Um, his um, he's got many thousands of clicks each. Yeah, fantastic interviews. They're just awesome, and he portrays the people to say, "Okay, these are normal people." He combines real life images of normal, down to earth. Uh, just creative people, and then shows the work they're doing in Second Life. And this way, he advertises Second Life greatly, the creativity of the people. And so, Chimera says, I think it helps a lot to have a natural facilitator personality like Heike does. Folks want to keep coming back even during the hard initial parts. Yeah, we're still seeing very few language learners actually compare it, compare it, you know, in comparison to the uh, numbers that other virtual worlds see. I mean, a good million in Second Life, but concurrent users are always hovering between 35 and 70,000, which is not really that great. So we, we've been kind of surprised how few students are around. And those we try to get into Second Life join for a course and then disappear. Well, many of them. But um, it's because of the technical challenges still. But when I started Lancelot, um, 
2003, we had software that was part of uh, still development. Um, we had forever beta versions of software. We had to install the software. And uh, that was virtual classroom technology software we had. And today we have Adobe. I mean, how easy going is that? And uh, I always think of that development. I mean, we went through the hard times, yeah, but virtual worlds were easy going, will be coming, and Google Earth may be one of them. Mystic says, virtual world has taught me so many things. It's a never ending story, and millions are spent on it in the real world. Do you mean millions spend in developing? virtual worlds or I'm not quite sure what, where the millions are spent. Well with smartphones this um, now I'm talking about Greta. Greta she says and smartphones can handle right so more even accessible for learners but that Greta that's a keyword for me and it was a keyword in the development. If you remember um, when we took over Second Life the Education Islands the first thing we heard was the bond abolishment of the educational rate. We had, at that time, it was really the trust of disillusionment. Everybody was disillusioned. It was a really hard, I, I thought I would buy the Titanic, to be honest, when I took over education. And um, then everybody moved out of Second Life and moved into mobile technology. At least us English teachers, you know, teachers, uh, language teachers. All, everybody went crazy about mobile and so I've been scratching my head for about a year thinking how can I counteract this development because uh, I love virtual worlds, I love second life, I love education, I love the people, I was just distraught myself. Now, but at that time I had this idea, look, a mobile phone and what can you see on the mobile phone? Machinima. You can watch a machinima to learn a language. You can see, visually see the conversation. Is it a hotel check-in? You don't even have to be able to understand. The, lots of visual clues to understand the language. And then once you watched it on your mobile, you can log into Second Life or OpenSim and actually join that community to learn the language in real time. And that's the thing that is genius about Camelot. With that, I'm closing. And thank you very, very much for joining me. You've been absolutely wonderful. And uh, yeah. <laughs> if there are no further questions, then I'll wrap this up here. And thank you so much. I cannot give you a URL as of yet of Camelot because the website hasn't been done. Coming up next. Yeah, and, and end of January is languages. If you could keep this in mind, it's languages.org. We'll, we'll be doing the website soon. <laughs> Bye for now. Yeah, thank you very much for joining. You've been wonderful. <laughs> Well, thank you, Heike. That was that was just terrific. I, I just love the uh, passion I hear coming out in your voice. Um, as a reminder to our audience, you can still you can still see what's coming up on the conference schedule at conference.opensimulator.org. Uh, next up, and I'm sure a lot of you will be happy for this, is a meal break until 11:30 when the conference is pleased to have our keynote presentation featuring one of my favorite people, Lear Lobo. Um, you know, I've never said that aloud. I don't know if it's Lyre or Lear. Um, the Exodus to the Virtual Frontier, the seductive lure of the mind space. Sounds so interesting. You can find the keynote regions on the map, so come early and get a seat. And remember, you've all been assigned uh, keynote one to four uh, for load balancing. Um, after the keynote here,